Here's a problem about re-expressing a scatter plot. It's uh, chapter 10, problem 11 in Bach, Feldman, DeVoe. It's about baseball salaries. They've tabulated the uh, highest salaries, um, basically the superstar salaries, uh, from 1980 for 13 people, I think it is, from 1980 to 2001 in millions of dollars, starting in $1 million and ending up at a very uh, nice chunk of change, $25.2 million. And this is per year. These are per year salaries. Pretty amazing. Okay. And um, here's what they ask. They say, re-express the data to straighten the scatter plot. Well, what, what do you mean, straighten the scatter plot? Well, obviously, we should make the scatter plot itself first and see if it really needs straightening. So I've entered in the years and the salaries into um, two, two uh, lists. And the first thing uh, to note is I was looking at this problem before and looking at the numbers. And the first thing is that these are really bad numbers to use, 1980 through 2001. Um, in particular, if you start doing linear um, fitting, you're going to be multiplying this by the slope. And these are really large numbers, and you're going to have to have incredibly good accuracy on your slope to get good answers. And there's no reason these have to be large. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to do a very simple re-expression, just a, a shift. Uh, in L2 here, what I did was I went ahead and just subtracted from 1980. And that goes from 0 to 21. Okay, so I'm not going to use the year. I'm going to use L2, which is really the year minus 1980. Okay, so that's a very simple re-expression that's really going to help us with our accuracy. Um, and in fact, in a later part of this video, we'll see that the calculator. Uh, I'll tell you, the calculator wouldn't actually do what we're going to try to do without um, this 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 step. Okay, so here's the salaries. So now let's go ahead and do a scatter plot of. L2, that's the year minus 1980, versus the salary. And let me just, oh, wait a minute, just a sec here. Why, I want to delete, I want to delete these because these shouldn't be there yet. Okay. All right, so there's our plot. Notice it starts out with zero, year zero, um, and salary $1 million and goes up to $25.2 million. This does look like it has a curve, an upward curvature to it. We should probably try to re express it first. And um, the claim I have is that a logarithm is the best way to re-express this data. And there's a couple reasons. One is, when you have upwardly curving data, it's not a bad idea just to try a logarithm. In other words, put it on a logarithmic scale. But the deeper reason for this kind of thing is that logarithms are all about percentage change, or relative change. How much is the 25.2, what percentage change is that from, say, the 1 or the 11 or any of the things before? Um, and in particular, uh, money tends to grow in this way. It tends to grow in an exponential fashion where it grows by the same percentage all the time. And so there's very good reasons to, express, ex to expect that a logarithmic re-expression is going to be good. Okay? So we use a log because it's curving upward and more particularly it seems to be roughly exponential growth for which a log will actually make it very close to linear. And we expect that kind of sort of percentage growth in money versus time. That's how inflation works. If you think that it would make sense to say, oh, salaries grew by 5% every year, that's exactly the kind of thing where a logarithm is going to be appropriate. OK, so we can do that. And I've actually already done that, but I'll do it one more time. Um, let's quit out of here. And what we do is take the logarithm of, we're going to go down to sal for salary. And we're going to store that in list 1, because that's open. OK, and there's the numbers. They start with 0. Notice that salary, I'll go back up here, the salary of $1 million is now becoming a 0. Notice that the million dollars of salary, that's analogous to what I did here, taking these numbers 1980 and making them into 0, 2, 10, etc. Uh, this isn't 1 million, 2.04 million, 3 million. There's no need for that, and it's more manageable numbers. Okay, so now we can do a different stat plot. We can do L2 versus L1. So second L1. And of course, it doesn't look very good, so we zoom 9 it. Aha! That does look pretty straight, okay? And we're going to check the, the linearity and the correlation and everything in a minute, okay? So. Let's go ahead and do that. Let's see if there's anything else they're asking us to do at this point. 
eh, create an appropriate model. Okay, so here's what we're trying to do. We've got log of salary, which is plotted in the vertical axis here. We've got year minus 1980 plotted on the horizontal axis. And we want to get our linear model, our intercept and our slope. And we know how to do that. Stat calc 8, lin reg a plus, a plus bx, and so our variables are L2, that's the year minus 1980, and L1, that's the log of salary, and we'll go ahead and plug that into vars y vars y1 so we can use it for the graph. Okay, so it's telling us that the intercept is 0.06048, I'll do five decimal places, plus 0.05734 times the year minus 1980. Does that seem reasonable? Yeah, this, it's that intercept actually does have a meaning here because that's at year zero, it was really year 1980, and we know that the log of salary should be exactly zero. So this should be a small number, and it is, okay? And then this is the slope. It's a little hard to interpret that in a, when you've re-expressed it, but it is some sort of growth rate, roughly, of how the salary is growing as a function of the year. Okay, so let's plot that. Now it's got that in the Y1. Wow, what a nice linear fit. This is looking pretty good, okay? So we can use that to predict a superstar salary for 2005. Let's just go ahead and, oh, I don't need that, and plug this in for 2005, okay? And we'll calculate it. I mean, easy to do on the calculator as well, but I'll just do it on the computer. Uh, except it doesn't put it in the right place. Okay, 1.494. Does that mean 1.49 million dollars? That'd be pretty weird. It should be bigger than at least 15 or 17, maybe bigger than 25. Remember, this is the log of the sal predicted salary. We need the actual predicted salary. Let me put a hat over it to make sure we know it's just the prediction, not the reality. And this is the one thing you know we have to know about the mathematics of logs, or one of the things we have to know, is that when we move it over, it becomes an exponential. And we've used a common logarithm here. It's a log base 10. So it's going to be 10 to the 1.4940. OK. And so um, remember, because the log, the definition is what's the mystery exponent you have to raise the number 10 to in order to get the number. So in order to get the number back, you actually do that process. You raise 10 to that power. And I'll do that. OK. And so that's 31.189. Almost certainly these digits are not meaningful, but somewhere around $31 million. That's our prediction. Okay. Now, warning, this is an extrapolation. It's a mild extrapolation. It's not ridiculously far away from the data. Just because this is super, super linear in these years doesn't mean that we can guarantee that at four years later the same stuff is going on. Um, so it's, it's a decent guess, but it really is just a guess, okay? Now, I want to show you an alternate method. Um, I like this because we do a certain amount by hand, but we get this beautiful linear picture. You can go ahead and not take the logarithm if you're willing to use expreg. So let me show you expreg. You go to stat calc, and it's down here at number 10, or 0, okay? Expreg is going to fit it in terms of this form. Our predicted salary is going to be some multiplier times some mystery number to the power of year minus 1980. And that's an exponential function because this is in the exponent slot. It turns out to be mathematically equivalent to this, and we'll see that. All we do is the same kind of thing. We take um, L2, because we still want year minus 1980. And this is where that's crucial. If I put in the year here, it actually blows up. It says overflow, because it doesn't like to take numbers to the power of 2,000. It, they tend to be really huge. And now I'm going to put in, um, instead of L1, the log of the salary, I'm going to put in the salary itself. So that's really the only advantage here, is you don't have to deal with the log of the salary. But you know what? You should be able to at least deal with the log of the salary. And I'm going to put that in as Y2, vars, Y vars, Y2. So we'll have that available for graphing. OK, so it's saying that it's uh, 1.1494 times 1.14114 to the year minus 1980. So that is a function that it has exponential growth. Let's go ahead and graph that. Let's go to the stat plot and go back to L2. And we're going to put this back in as salary not the log anymore. Okay, graph that. 
Uh, we need to uh, we need to change a bunch of other stuff. Let's do y. E come on. Let's do y equals. It's so slow when it does exponents. Okay. We're going to take that away. We don't need that. And then we're going to zoom nine. Okay. So there's our original stat plot. Remember of our curving. Uh, salaries and here's the exponential graph and yeah it seems to seems to do pretty well it seems to be a pretty good fit but it's a little harder to use our intuition about gra about um, these graphs we we get a certain amount of intuition about linear fits that we want to be really able to, able to use and it, yeah okay this is a good fit but it's a little harder to use our intuition here so that's why I think this method isn't as good even though it's maybe a few uh, fewer buttons pushed let's go ahead and copy this and just check to see that it gives the same answer for um, the 2005 salary. Okay, and indeed it does very close. And of course, there's some decimal places that I fudged here, so it's pretty close. Now, even if it had gotten a somewhat different answer, that'd be okay. Maybe an indication that's using a different method from what we'd expect. What this shows, the fact that it is so close, shows that what it's probably doing is what we did. It probably did the logarithm of the salary. It did a linear fit, which is an extremely standard operation. That's only one way everybody does it. And then it went ahead and just took 10 to the, to the answer, basically, to express it in this way. Okay. So either kind of answer is good. Here's the, the exponential curve that talks about the salary. Here's the, the straight line that talks about the log of salary. I think there's a somewhat of a preference for this, really, and you, but you, it's good to understand both.